Hello, 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 hello. Good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening, depending on which part of the world you're in. Um, I just want to say thank you for this privilege and for this honor. I hope I'm in the framing. I had to record this on my own move just with a phone and I ain't here, but that's perfect. It's perfect. It's going to work out well. Um, to my brothers and my sisters in the Oceania area and for those who are watching online from wherever you might be God bless you uh, it's a privilege to be invited to be part of this fantastic um, program that you have uh, the gathering Whew! also themed the advantage uh, it's, uh, it's completely just uh, absolutely interesting I'm currently right now in RCCG camp in Texas um, I don't know what the time difference is I'm not even gonna try but thank you for allowing me to join you let's pray so we can share and um, pray that God would touch your heart touch your soul touch your mind and turn things around father Lord in the mighty name of Jesus I say thank you for the listener thank you for me thank you for allowing us to be here Lord we are asking for grace and mercy that whatever we share today, Lord Jesus, it will not be a waste of our time. For the next 40 minutes or so, it will not be a waste of our time. But rather, Lord, this will take us to where you need us to be. It would open our minds, open new doors, open new sights. Let us have a, a, an insight into what it is that you need to do with us, where you want us to be, where we are, and how far you're going to push us to be able to get there. Lord, please, by the end of today, let us know and understand what, the, what it is it is to have the advantage and how it is to be an advantage. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Can I get an amen? That your amen is still sitting in front of a desk. Can I get an amen? Come on, man, make it work one more time. Put some clap in it. Put up some emojis in there. Can I get an amen? All right. So my text today, uh, as I've been charged, um, it's from John chapter 14 verse 26 John chapter 14 verse 26 but before I read I really need to thank the leadership for for really chasing me to do this I actually learned from from uh, from being part of this uh, event um, so thank you because I, I learned I'm, I'm only here to share what it is that I've learned and I've seen from the Word of God with you um, yeah so thank you once again john chapter 14 verse 26 i'm using the international children's bible version uh, i try to dumb down the word to a point where not dumb it down that's not fair i uh, break it down to a point in which you will be able to keep it as simple as clean as clear as possible john 14 26 but the helper will teach you everything it will cost you to remember all the things i have told you this helper is the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name i'll read it one more time just for clarity's sakes i hope you enjoy my background music i kind of like it too it's gospel smooth jazz <laughs> john chapter 14 verse 26 but the helper will teach you everything it would cause you to remember all the things i have told you this helper is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. All right. So, um, at the start of life, all of us, every single person that is listening to this, that is watching me, we all get to start life on a fairly plain level, on the same level. I mean, what do I mean by this? Um, we are born with one heart. Um, I don't know, maybe there might be an anomaly with someone that has two hearts. Um, but we're born with one heart mostly, we're born with one head, almost all of us, at least 98% of us across the world, and usually with one body. Um, in most cases, we're born with one dad, except if it's a donor, um, and we're born with one mom. Either way you shake it, everybody's born by at least a mom. You cannot have two moms at the same time, uh, neither can you have two dads at the same time. Regardless of whatever the, the world is trying to say now, it's one on one. Um, yeah, even out of the million sperms, only one makes it. So we're all coming at, at, a, at a plain level, at, at, at the same stage, at the same understanding. Some people would argue with me, but no, Pastor Lake, what are you talking about? I was born in Nigeria, 
um, that is not on a plane level with someone born in Australia or someone born in New Zealand or someone born in Thailand. It's not the same level. All right, but then to some, yeah, some might say that they were at an advantage because of where they were born, you know, Texas, uh, in the USA, or in the Manhattan areas of New York, in the United States as well. Some would say that the certain places that they were born is also a disadvantage. From Mushi, where I was born, um, going through a um and then, you know, living in the jungles in Ogun State. But I would give you this, just as an opener. If you're too comfortable from where you are born, it can actually lead to your destruction. So the comfort you might be enjoying from where you're born can also actually be a disadvantage to you. Where you think is an advantage, being born in certain wealthy areas across the world might come across as an advantage. But you might never know, it can also turn around to be a disadvantage because of the level of comfort that is that is there. I'm sure for Bible scholars, they would find it where certain enjoyments can lead to your destruction. It is also good in some cases where some people might consider that it's uncomfortable, um, as in where they were born for them is a disadvantage because it is uncomfortable. There's no light, there's no running water, there is no basic things, uh, uh, you know, amenities that everybody has to survive in life. But rather, that can lead you to the push, to the drive in which you need. Um, so the places that you consider a disadvantage in life, it's actually an advantage for you because you would gain, you would have more drive, you would have more push than anyone else. So let me give you this, let me, let me paint you a picture. My father um, didn't wear shoes for the first 18 years of his life. That's my part. Um, but then, you know, I do a rewind. If he didn't get any shoes for the first 18 years of his life, his father before him probably never had any shoes for all his whole life. Um, to be, to be, you know, to be, I don't even want to see that manicure, pedicure bill. Um, anyway, uh, and then now there's me, three generations, the third generation on that lineup. And I, I have all sorts of shoes from new balances to red sole shoes to, you know, whatever else, uh, different designs, half shoe, full shoe, whatever kind of shoe, bedroom shoe, bathroom shoe, uh, walk around the house shoe whatever shoe um and you know and i'm thinking wow i mean one of the things that even hit me recently was by the grace of god and god alone i was able to purchase a shoe that cost the same amount as the car that i bought when i was a student the first ever car that i bought while i was hustling heavily as a student um i mean if you're doing a conversion it was about 500 pounds and then you know to be able to buy a shoe that will cost more than that uh, while I was feeling guilty and I was sharing this with one of my, you know, close cocoon buddies, he said both of them are doing the same assignment. One is driving you to a place, the other one is walking you to a place. It's just, uh, you know, different values and all of that. So my fear is this, I look at things around, my sons and my daughters now have more shoes than they would ever need. So you see the progression on that and what you might call an advantage or disadvantage. My fear is... If I don't let my children have an understanding and then place them in a place of understanding of the advantage that they have in life and how they can use it, which is why we're here. If I don't place them in a place of advantage or let them understand the place of advantage that they have in life and how to use it, they might go back to having no shoes when I'm no longer here. Or their own children might go back to having no shoes when I'm no longer here. So question I, I, I put up is this. The first is advantage. The advantage you're looking for today comes from information. Pointer number one, the advantage you're looking for today comes from information. The Bible says there in the text that we read, it says the helper will come. The helper will come. Hold that in one hand. Don't let go of that. Where will you be when the helper comes? That's the question you should ask yourself. The Bible gives us many things and many examples that we can use as a case study on this. The ten virgins. Some of them were ready, some were not ready. Some were not at the right place. See, time, location, right place. When the helper did come. You will see that in Matthew 25, chapter 25. You can go and read the whole thing. I'm sure you would even glean some other insights into that. Then you could also see the ten lepers 
in Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 29, Luke 17, verse 11 to 29, the 10 lepers were in the right place. Hence why it was easy for them to meet Jesus and see Jesus when he came, when their helper came. If they were not there at that particular time, then Jesus would have passed through and they wouldn't have known. They would not even been recorded that there was anything of such that happened. The wife of Isaac, Isaac is probably one of the greatest characters in the Bible that I love because of what happened to him and how it happened to him and the situation across board. Um, Isaac was just perfect. Isaac was fantastic for, for a case study. But then the wife of Isaac was found by the servant while she was at the watering hole or the well and she was doing a thing. Now, imagine if you're one of those procrastinating ladies that will like, ah, I'll do it later on, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, mm, nah. The servant, the high chief servant or executive steward, depending on how you want to brand his name, would have missed Rebecca that day. Genesis chapter 24. So this is a little inside for my single sisters. If you really, really want to get married, get busy in being in certain positions where those men can see you. That is the advantage. This is talking about advantage. I'm giving you tips on advantage right now. That is one of the advantages, my darling sister. Being that place where they can see you. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. You have to, you know, your Bluetooth needs to be on so you can be found. You get me? You need to be in a place where they can find you. You know, this lady was serving. Yeah, you can be in places where people serve. Or shoe in department. Uh, where you get to interact with people. Uh, hospitality. Welcoming to church kind of team. I don't know if you guys have that in your, um, you know, local assembly. Or be at those, you know, event centers where, or, or events where, um, where they're helping, you know, the, the, uh, homeless people or you know when you're working for charity be out there man let, let someone see you where you're doing your thing so it's easier you know what i mean you don't have to struggle yeah that's just an insight let's move on don't let me stick to that and then please don't procrastinate i used to make a joke with um with i don't want to say i don't want to with uh, with some family members and the, the joke is this when the trumpet sounds, the angel is going to have to come back. When the trumpet sounds, the angel is going to have to come back and blow a second time for the Nigerian women because, or some women generally, don't let me just say Nigerian women, because of how long it will take them to get ready. You know, the angel will be like, this is the last one though. This is the last one. I'm not blowing another one after this one. If you are not ready now, that's it. So don't procrastinate, please. All right. So, you have to be guided right. You have to be guided right. You have to be in the right place, right? You have to have this mentality not to be distracted, but to be discerning, yeah? Which one are you? Are you the distracted person or a discerning person? You have to be like the sons and daughters of God, of Issachar, that is found in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 13, yeah? Your first prayer point today, 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 13, the first prayer point today, which you hold in another hand, because you already have something you're holding in this hand, is, Lord, let me be at the right place at the right time to be able to take advantage of my advantage. Lord, let me be at the right place at the right time to be able to take advantage of my advantage, okay? Now, you have that initial pointer that I give you, and then you have the prayer points. Put them both in your pocket. Find a pocket, find a purse, find a bag, find a gun, I must go. Put them inside. Then we move on. Point number two. I'm watching my time at the same time. The helper will teach you. The helper will teach you. To have an advantage, you must be humble enough to be taught. The helper will teach you. I'm going to hit you with some Bible passages. Stay with me because apparently my introduction chewed up a lot of my time. So I'm going to run at you right now. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5 ESV version. First Peter chapter 5 verse 5. The pointer that I gave was the helper will teach you. To have an advantage, you must be humble enough to be taught. First Peter chapter five verse five ESP version says, "Likewise, you are younger. You, uh, uh, you who are younger, excuse me. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another." 
For God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, which means be willing to be taught. I actually like this. I like this because it says that you should listen to the others, listen to the people that are on the same level as you, and even be humble enough to drop yourself now and listen to children. I'm willing to learn from everyone so that I can know what it is to do and how to do it. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1, Proverbs chapter 12 verse 1 says, Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates um, who hates it and, 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 and is reproved is stupid. He who hates being reproved and being corrected is stupid. That's what the Bible says. I didn't, I didn't say it. I know I've said many things before that is put on social media. In this case, this is point clear. You know, there's even Bible passages to, pa- to back up all the other things that I've said on social media, but we're not going there today. That's another, that's another whole meeting entirely. Whoever loves discipline, loves knowledge, but he who hates being reproved is stupid. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 18 says, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 18 says, Poverty and disgrace will come to him who ignores instruction, but whoever heeds reproof is honored. Poverty and disgrace comes to the person that ignores instruction, that is not humble enough to be taught, that is not willing to follow what it is that has been told or shared to them. But whoever heeds reproof, whoever listens, whoever understands, whoever takes it, whoever heeds, accepts it, will be honored. All right. So then now I told you I'm going to hit you with several. Then Proverbs chapter nine, verse nine, Proverbs chapter nine, verse nine says this. It says, give instruction to a wise man or woman and he or she will be wiser still will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man or a righteous woman and they would increase in learning. They would increase in wisdom. They would increase in their understanding. All right. So I'll hit you with a, with a personal story that connects with this. When I was about uh, eight or nine, I've always wanted to help out. I saw my father doing, uh, you know, going out on many mission fields, but I'm like, okay, at least let me iron your clothes on one of these things. So it tells me you're not tall enough. You can iron quite all right, because you know, the ironing board is, is quite large. If you guys know, I mean, a Nigerian household, we didn't have a ironing table. We had a board. It's like a big, massive wooden board that, you know, cause of the Agbadas, the big clothing. So you are literally, you know, ironing the whole of the state let's put it that way anyway so he told me um he told me you might need a stool you would need a stool you would definitely need a stool to be able to do this and i'm like no i don't don't need a stool man i can reach it you know strength of the length of my arm um between eight and nine so i didn't listen so i started ironing this fantastic uh cloth that i was doing you know all happy and i was wonderful you know I, i was enjoying myself and I was really close to the board, super close to the board, right? And I ironed the something. Ironed the something to the point that I ironed it to myself. As in, I ironed it all the way. And as I was ironing it, it just came and then just clipped my tummy. Like the iron just went shh. I thought it was part of the, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, oh God, the steam. I thought it was part of this thing, not knowing that I burnt myself clean. Oof. Maybe I should have learned. Maybe I should have had an understanding of what it is that my father said, get a stool. Because with stool, you would have height. You'll be able to see just before the iron even comes and just grazes your tummy. Anyway, I ended up with a scar. Yeah, I still have the scar till tomorrow. Um, regardless of how good yeah your intentions are i mean it, it, you know <laughs> to the men and women some of us in the bid to prove ourselves uh, to prove ourselves and to and to let you know let people know um what it is that we are we are capable of and um, we still need to be teachable so we don't have to suffer, suffer scars yeah we still need to be teachable so that we don't have to suffer scars all right um even though we have good intention. Another you know, story that happened was we had this flight attendant and um, you know, when she came, she came with the mindset that uh, she knows what she's doing. I've told her many million and one times, ask questions of whatever you're not sure of. Stop trying to bugai anybody. It's not going to work for you, all right? And um, she got ice. I told her, get ice, get 
crushed ice that was the request for the journey so she went ahead um and she was told by the fbo that she wanted to get the ice from you know the fixed uh, base of operation that um we have to kind of ice to kind of crush ice do you want a regular ice or the dry ice you didn't ask which is which she just goes dry one now for those who understand dry ice when released and opened even on the normal ground brings out a lot of smoke when opened at a high altitude um it would put everybody in the aircraft to sleep including the pilots but thanks to god almighty we caught it your next prayer point and you're going to hold it in your hand you just say father father you have to say like you mean it come on father let me be humble before you are forced to humble me lord please let me be humble before you are forced to humble me that is your second prayer point you can pray it now or pray it after either way make sure you pray it let me be humble lord before you humble me point number three because my time is running the bible the bible text that we read says it will teach you everything it will teach you everything and between you and i from one young adult to another from one youth to another there are many things to learn in this journey of life many many things from family how to deal with family from education what kind of education do i want to people how do i deal with people oh god to love what kind of love the different kind of loves it's not everything that you actually say you love it is that you actually love you might actually just like or be in an infatuation stage but you use the word love you need to learn about relationships not just with the opposite sex but with your phone yeah relationship with your with, with, with yourself relationship with people at work uh, you need to learn about boundaries oh my oh god oh lord you need to learn about boundaries how to set boundaries in a very nice polite way don't call me after 10 except the world is ending you know things along those lines we need to learn about money we need to learn about money we need to learn about heart what kind of heart is there um you know we need to it's so much so much to learn about and so much to understand um self-discovery so the bible says and it will teach you everything another another version says all things yeah so there's so much to learn about all right um and then you you, you know if you if you if you are to be real with yourself like uh, james chapter 1 verse 5 says if you're ever stuck you can just ask show me hi i like i like i like this i like this version <laughs> if you're ever stuck you can just ask show me this is Lakey's version james chapter 1 verse 5 actually says if any of you lack wisdom you should ask god who is who gives sorry generously without finding fault of whom we is trying to give because a, a lot of you get fault a lot of us get fault don't say you and it will be given unto that person. If you ever lack wisdom, if you ever get stuck, just ask. Show me. All right. Don't try and don't try and don't try and wisdom it out when you don't know. Don't try and get dry ice thinking is the same as a crushed ice. Same size, different purposes. All right. You can't even put crushed uh, dry ice into a, a drink, or you might chill it, but you will fall asleep or come out with a different kind of smoke. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 also says this it says it says ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you would find knock and the door will be opened unto you and the door will be opened unto you Proverbs chapter 2 verse 3 to 6 Proverbs chapter 2 verse 3 to 6 says that indeed if you call out for insight and cry out for understanding and if you look for it like as if it's silver and search for it as hidden treasures then you understand the fear of god and you would find the knowledge of god the lord for the lord who gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and also understanding all right so what do you want to know you need to ask god so he can show you whatever you want to know whatever you want to know 
you need to ask God so he can show you. Your prayer point would be, Lord, please show me my advantage. Show me my understanding. Show me what it is that I do not know. Help me not to try and form like I know what I don't know and then go and mess it up and put people's lives in danger. Help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue. Point number four, because time, time, time. Point number four. So, some of you will say, Sir, you have said all these things. You have said all these things. Who or what is the advantage? That's why I heard someone asking me that question just right now. So, you said all of this, and I've heard some of this before. I know some of this. I could even preach it better than you are right now. But who or what is the advantage? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's why I'm here. The advantage is also the helper. The advantage is the helper. And this helper is the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16, verse 7. John chapter 16, verse 7 says, But I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I am living. It is for your advantage that I'm living. If I do not leave, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send you the helper. And Jesus has left already. And he has sent us this helper. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Acts chapter 2, verse 33 says, Therefore, since he has been exalted at the right hand of God and has received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, he has poured out this which for both of us, both for us to see, both ears and eyes. He has poured him out to us so that we can see him and hear him with both our eyes and our ears. So which means we do have the Holy Spirit present here. It just depends now on you, how you tune and where you are to get into his frequency, to get into his space. So you can have the Holy Spirit. This is, this is just where I'm telling you. This is where I'm going to. You can have the Holy Spirit. The wisdom that he brings into all the situation of life, the teaching of everything that you need to ever know and how to deal with it. Not only can he, but he would also teach you. He would also not only teach you, but he would bring it to remembrance because there's a lot. You know, part of the listings that I've less that you know, things I listed about the things you would have to deal with in life. You can see there's a lot in there. Uh, and you would be in different places and different situations that you need to remember certain things. One of the things that my father taught me that uh, recently I was trying to remember, he said there's three things that uh, in, in, uh, in, in the land of the Yoruba people as a culture that you do not tell another human being not to do. You can never tell them not to um, become a king or get crowned. You can never tell them not to get married. You can also never tell them not to build or buy a house. All right. Um, that's a little bit deep. So just, just put that one on the shelf. Don't put it in your hand. It's, it's another thing entirely. But when I was in that situation, I needed to have that remembrance of the instruction that I was given so that I would know how to speak to the individual in front of me because I cannot tell them, don't get married, even though I know. And, you know, uh, there's a side to them that are not ready yet, but I can ask certain questions, but I cannot go, don't go get married. Yeah, but I can ask questions now, let them realize they're not ready. Anyway, it would bring all things to your remembrance. That is who the Holy Spirit is. He is the helper, he is the advantage, he is the one that is able to teach us all things. And the Bible has made it clear that he is around. Since Jesus left, he sent him in and is willing to pour him onto us with both eyes and ears, as in the ways in which you absorb things is by what you see and what you hear. That is the best way you teach people. What you see, what you hear is what you can then, you know, speak and then release. What you assimilate, what information you take in with your eyes, with your hearing, is what it is that you are able to speak and, 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 then, and then, you know, communicate with others. Point number five. So how do I get the advantage? over everything and everyone in life how do i get the advantage over everything and everyone in life first you have to accept that you need help first you have to accept that you need help yeah if you don't accept you if you don't believe you need help just end this end this right now and move to another channel all right the bible says that nothing is given to anyone except given from above okay the same bible says from where else cometh my help my help comes from he who has made heaven and earth which means still from above. We are in his world, we are in, on his timeline, we are on the status 
uh, his WhatsApp status. We are on his own agenda. We are on his credit. We are on absolutely everything. So, my brother, my sister, if you want to make it, it's very simple. You have to surrender to him so that you can get the advantage. Now, you know, I always hear people say, uh, what was that? Oh, Jesus, take the will. Oh, Lord, take the will. But then you give him the will, it puts it into reverse, and you're like, oh, no, nah, no. Nah. If you surrender, you just you shouldn't even wear your seatbelt. If Jesus is driving, you shouldn't wear your seatbelt. Because one, you could easily fly. So driving is just trying to chill with you. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, do not be shaped by this world. Instead, this is the ICB translation, the International Children's Translation. It says, do not be shaped by this world, but instead be changed within by the new, by a new thinking, by a new thinking. Then you'll be able to, to decide what God wants for you. You'll be able to know what is good and what is pleasing and perfect for you. <laughs> So therefore, same Bible makes it clear. So it says, so brothers, since God has shown us great mercy, I beg you to please offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. Your offering must be only for God and pleasing him. This is the spiritual way of your worship. You want the advantage. You need the advantage. To get this advantage, you must submit to the owner of the advantage. How do you plan to work on journey or use a product or be in a life or a system without trying to understand the manual that is written for that product? You cannot go through life and succeed without working with the person with the advantage. Well, actually, you can go through life and you struggle. So today, if you know you've been struggling, you know you've been struggling, I'm going to make a call at the end of this so that you can jump in and be a part of what it is that would create change in your totality. I promise you, sir, Ama, that if there's no change in your life, please, I will drop my phone number on you. Call me and tell me that this thing I'm saying is not real. Because I know it works. I'm a point blank, blunt example that this works. Anyway, so, you know, before we get to that, you would ask me, what are the advantages of what are the advantages of having advantages? Hey, what are the advantages of having an advantage? Well, there are plenty. Let me give you some, all right? You will know certain things before others do. Okay, that's one. Write it down quickly. Time. I'm looking at my time. You will actually know certain things before other people do. One of the things that I learned is this. I left England over 17 years ago, and it has been the best years of my life since that time right holy spirit just told me pack up your stuff get out go back to nigeria it doesn't look good it doesn't look rosy but at that point in my life i submitted and i was trying to have an understanding and learn what are the advantages that i can gain from hearing from god through the help of the holy spirit and that is the time i was learning how to hear from him and boom he said pack up your stuff and go and i left oh god did i leave and then the recession hit england that literally crumbled the economy around that time and i wasn't there for that i wasn't there for that anyway another point that you get when you have advantage when you have the advantage is you would have more knowledge than others you would be you know if you're useful enough you will never be left behind case in point right here if you're useful enough due to the amount of knowledge that you have you will not be left behind that is an advantage that you would get you would remember better than others you remember things better than others you remember names you remember situations locations and freedom better than others you would have self-awareness at a hundred percent rate self-awareness at a hundred percent you would not have any mental health issues because your mentality would be that of one of an advantage. You would not see problems, but rather you would see solutions. You would always see a way out. If you've ever had the opportunity, please go to Israel. You would have, you would have a full understanding of how God deals with his people and gives them an advantage over others. I mean, who, who, who gets that kind of wisdom to have a, a rocket that can go and shoot down another rocket after it has been shot up in the air? That is an advantage. Best believe it, it's an advantage. The ability to help others would be a lot easier for you. 
that's another pointer an ability to help others will be a lot easier for you because you will no longer be struggling if you're no longer struggling and it, it, it is easier to teach others how to also survive and not out and how to not struggle because the, the, there will not be as much need, much demand on you, on your time, on your situation, um, because now you have an ad advantage over everyone else. That leads me to another point, uh, you will have little or no downtime. You will have little or no downtime, because everything in your life will be planned in advance and ahead, in ahead and with an advantage. So which means you, you don't have a downtime. You don't have a time where you're doing nothing and just sitting at home looking like a plum okay you will be in control and no longer controlled yay hey whoever gets that one take it you will be in control and no longer controlled either by the physical or the spiritual yeah ha ah. because of time let me close it out <laughs> and i was telling them i think 45 minutes would be too much now uh, i've used it all up <laughs> so I just want to say thank you to everybody, uh, you know, for I, I hope you've gotten something from this. You can always rewind it back. You can always uh, ask for an opportunity to check it and see what it is that, I, that you didn't get. If there was a pointer in there and you can always ask me a question. But I just want us to now focus on those who don't have a relationship with God or those who think they have a relationship, uh, but they're actually single. They're not, they're not actually in any relationship, not with God or with anyone. Maybe with the devil, though, but not with God. Um, because if I just make this clear first, let's, let's clear that, you know, you have to get into a relationship with God and it's simple. It is very simple. You need to confess it, that God, I want to be on your side. You need to believe that he can help you and you then need to accept him. Okay. So let's start with that. If you're listening to me right now, just say this simple prayers, the Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to come and help me. I'm already at a, at a disadvantage and I admit it nothing seems to work out i've run away from one nation i've run to another nation i've run from one job to another job everything just keeps going to a deadlock and uh, i don't know but right now i just want to say i submit to you i ask that you please help me i confess that you're the only one that can help me out of this you created this world you're controlling the physical and the spiritual lord so help me help me help me lord i also believe that you can help me and right now with my mouth I say I confess and I accept that you are the true son of God. That you, Jesus, are the true son of God. And through my relationship with you, I would get an opportunity to get to the Holy Spirit and he will be able to help me. It would be my advantage. He would teach me all things. It would bring all things to my remembrance. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name we've prayed. If you just pray that prayer, type into the chat box, put your details. The organizers of this event would definitely love to reach out to you and to be able to speak to you on the one-on-one -on -one and get your details. And of course, I will be praying along with you because we're just in the same boat right now and it makes it easier to paddle when there's more people in your boat going in the same right direction with a sign on a sign on the boat that says those with the advantage. Yeah. And then secondly, for every single person that is on this call right now, we're going to do our own prayer so we can check out. First, remember those prayer points that I gave you at the beginning? You're going to pray those ones. But because of time, I'll let you do that after. But this is going to be our main prayer point right now. Yeah, because all of us are in here together. The only thing that we're going to ask for is for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Let's go ahead and ask that the Holy Spirit will come in and fill us in every single area of our lives, in our education, in our relationships, in our mindset, in our decision-making process, in our choices, in our attitude, in everything that has to do with us and with our family and with those who we are connected with, that we ask that the Holy Spirit will come in and just take absolute control of everything. We need His help. We need His help in figuring out life. We need His help in dealing with other people. We need His help in handling our finances. We need His help when it comes to career, jobs, business, ideas, uh, our registered companies, taxes. We need His help when it comes to managing in-laws, outlaws, parents, uh, um, absent parents. We need His help with managing our, our, our partners, uh, either in business or in love or in marriage. 
Now we need your help, Holy Spirit. Just come. Come walk with us. Come and help us. You're the one that can give us the advantage. And tonight, Lord, we claim this advantage. So go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not hearing you pray. I'm the only one praying right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we claim this advantage. We claim you the advantage, which is the Holy Spirit. We claim you to take us to the next stage, to take us to the next level. We ask for your help. We ask for your assistance. We ask for your grace. We don't want to do this journey alone. Lord, we surrender. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender all to you. We surrender all to you because you are the only one that can help us. We know that you are the one that has been helping us. We know that you will keep helping us. Father, please help us, help us, help us, help us. Help this, my brother that is looking at me right now, not praying. Help that my sister that is not focusing, but rather getting a cup of tea or something. This prayer is not going to be that long. So go ahead and ask that the Holy Spirit will come and fill the room where you are right now. Fill your mind, fill your space, fill your environment run through your device give you that insight that you've always needed that wisdom that eyes opening idea from what has been holding you back solutions in the mighty name of jesus solutions to those problems solutions because now you have the advantage you will no longer be the laughing stock at work in your family in whatever state that you've been held back because now you would get the advantage and god almighty would help you and assist you thank you almighty god Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. I just want you to reach out wherever you are right now so that I can tap to you just the same way I'm stretching out my hands so that I can connect to you. I only got two minutes left. I pray for those who are reaching out to me right now that Lord Almighty, they stretch for their hands and faith. I'm a miracle child, O oh Lord. I connect with them and I connect them to me. Give them a miracle. Give them the advantage, Lord, that they need in life. Let their testimonies begin from now. Let their turnaround begin from now. Even Lord, if they're not going to say a proper amen, please have mercy on them and hear them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name we've prayed. Amen and amen, amen. Come on, say that amen like you mean it, like you believe it. God bless you, God bless you, and thank you to the organizers. Thank you to all those who are connected to this. Uh, hopefully one of these days we'll see you in that Oceania area. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, uh, day, month, year in Jesus' name. See you soon. Shalom. <laughs>